the rest of the park. Today I am actually going to Yemen which is my 31st country. I'm traveling with a friend and they want to go to every country in the world. So I'm going to Yemen by default. <laughs> uh, do not take this as travel advice. Uh, do your own research. In Australia, it is currently on the do not travel to list. It is red, which means we are not going to be covered by travel insurance. However, I will document the day. We do have a private driver. Uh, I imagine there's gonna be a lot of rides. It is an expensive day. So come along, if you're going to Yemen. This is what we're dealing with. Although it is not as hot as Dubai was. And we have coffee to start the day. Turkish coffee specifically. I don't know what time my body thinks it is right now. <laughs> but it doesn't think it's almost 8 o'clock. Look at the topography on the Omani side of the border. It's crazy. Well, my father was offered two camels for my hand in marriage at the border. And here we are, it's beautiful. To come through immigration here, it was 100 US dollars. So we had to pay for the tour and then 100 US dollars. I think I've spent 600 Australian dollars on the entire day. This is beautiful. This is where we're going. So we're going into the city and we're going to go and have lunch. That is where we're at. So many people are so confused with me being this woman. literally pure beach here. The town, the city that we're in right now is called Horf and there's like the beach. This is where we're walking down to right now. There is so much camel poo here. I'm sure about you but the most random thing that I've done to date in my life is come to the beach in Yemen. I wasn't expecting to do this ever. There are so many camels. They are everywhere. A football field. This is a pure desert. Is... We just got pulled over by a Yemeni official and they invited us out, but we weren't sure what that meant, so obviously we declined. This country is beautiful. Huh? Huh? It's a gas station. so much rubbish everywhere. Look at this. 
And Robert just said that um, people come up here to choose chew cuts, which is like a um, stimulant to get high, essentially. There is a car here uh, full of women and children. So maybe they're just having like a picnic. Today is Friday, so the beginning of the weekend. This is the kitchen of the restaurant we're in. That canister is filled with rice. I don't even know what this guy's making over here. This is a view from our restaurant and we're literally in a hotel room because they've got a woman with them. Are you ready? <laughs> this is lunch. There is so much rice on the one plate. We all have our own. Literally, that's like... And then all this chicken. And I think this is tomato. This man just bought this bread in. <laughs> Where did he get those from? I just came on board this dessert. I think it's like honey and bread and cream. I don't know if that means like yogurt. And confirm it was like a bread and butter pudding with cream and so much honey. He completely finished his. It's gone. And like it's the same over here. So much gone. So I'm not allowed to away from the I'm not allowed to eat down here. This is the men's eating only room. No mark and we're coming back. Know, we're like 50 kilometers from Sulhala. We've stopped at this beach. It's at sunset. There's so many people here. There's so many. So everyone's staying on these grates have obviously made it safer by putting grates there and people aren't just staying in the blowholes and then the water comes up like that yeah like that. Oh the kids sucked. <laughs> And there's more grates over here, however, there's not really any um, surf today. Let's talk about Yemen. <laughs> I imagine this is going to be really long-winded and I apologize. Yes, it was a really busy day, so I didn't really get the time to stop and talk to the camera about what was going on. Instead, I did get a lot of montage and it was absolutely beautiful. So I apologize if I repeat myself in anything that I said yesterday. I'm probably not going to edit this part. I do have a lot of dialogue to say, so I anticipate it's going to be long and I, I'm not going to bother cutting it up. So we went to Yemen yesterday, it's the second most dangerous country in the world. And please um, keep that in mind. If you're trying to make a decision about going to Yemen, don't take my word as gospel and do as much research as possible. We live in Australia. The Australian government has listed Yemen as a do not travel to zone, which means that if anything would happen while we were over there, they would not come and support us in Yemen. We take that risk um, at our own choice. And the same with travel insurance would not cover us if anything went wrong in Yemen. We're back in Oman, we're in Salala. It's beautiful and we had a fantastic day. So we decided to go to Yemen. My friend decided to go to Yemen because they are on a journey to visit every single country in the world. And I just came along. It was a last minute decision for me to go to Yemen. I wasn't always like 100% I'm gonna go to Yemen. Um, there was a third person with us as well from Portugal. We didn't know him. He just happened to be in Salala and the same day we had organized to go, he wanted to go and he had messaged his driver. So the driver asked us, would that be okay if he joined? Um, absolutely fine. It was a great day. Carlos, you were amazing. I'm so glad we went to Yemen together and hopefully we'll catch up in the future. So the three of us went, it was an expensive day, 250 US dollars per person. There was a little bit of bribery that went on throughout the day. So keep that in mind, it's not, it's not cheap. Uh, there are tours that 
you can do to go to Yemen five days, five nights, six days. Um, you fly in from Egypt and it's all organized. So they are almost like a thousand US dollars per night. Remember, everything is included um, and the same with yesterday. So it was not like an organized tour in terms of like we jumped onto Vieta or TripAdvisor and we lined it up. It was through word of mouth that we got this guy's details um, and we sent him a message and just organized it that way. So I don't even think the Oman government would step in if something were to go wrong. Uh, he was absolutely lovely. He's part of a tribe that's part of, um, like in this part of Oman, in Salala, in um, Yemen and in Saudi Arabia as well. So he had contacts like or, or friends you know cousins in these places so that made it a little bit easier but yeah it's definitely not cheap so we started the day at about 8 a.m in Salala he came and picked us up and then we drove two hours to the border when we got to the border it was about an hour wait to get our passport stamped it took so long so take snacks I was so hungry um it was gorgeous. It was just like we were, we were in the Middle East. There was these like grand walls around us. They were all the same color. Um, the, the architecture, like the cutouts in it, it was beautiful. It was absolutely gorgeous. So when we got stamped out of Amman and we went into Yemen, there, it wasn't even 500 meters down the road and you could immediately tell we were in the second most dangerous country in the world. So there was like this little fence and I wish that I could like, I wish that I took footage. Obviously you can't take footage. And I was like, I was so nervous going through customs and immigration about it. But in hindsight, I'm like, damn, I wish I took footage. So there was literally a fence, like worse than a, a fence you would find on a farm at home. Um, there was this fence there and they like open it up and there's maybe seven employees in the area. I was expecting more guns. There weren't a lot of guns. Um, so all the seven employees all had like a machine gun on them. The supervisor had a pistol on him and everyone had a baton on them as well. Uh, I mean, they were lovely. They were fine. I always, I can't speak Arabic, so I don't know what they said. I don't know. Maybe they weren't, but they were friendly enough to us. I didn't feel threatened at all. We went to immigration. Now it's a hundred US dollars to get a visa into Yemen. That is the same if you do a tour or not. Um, I will say that with the hundred dollars, I'm not convinced that that's going to the government. There's probably just no record of us entering Yemen and they've got 300 US dollars and they share it amongst themselves. After that, we went to customs. Now at customs, our driver actually gave his passport over. And I guess just like as a sign that yes, I'm going to leave Yemen at the end of the day, I'm not too sure. He gave that over. And then um, from there we went into Yemen and it was gorgeous. Uh, I can imagine that one day when Yemen does open up to the rest of the world that it is going to be a hot spot. The beaches were just like so long and the waves breaking. Were, it, it was absolutely magnificent. It, it was beautiful. I just wanted to go for a swim. I wanted to grab a surfboard. I, I loved it. There was like little rock pools and on the way out you could see the kids like jumping into the rock pools. I did ask my driver um, why there was no one swimming and he said it's too dangerous. No one knows how to swim and so when someone dies swimming they just like no one goes in the ocean. There, there was literally no one swimming in the ocean. The only people we saw swimming were kids in rock pools. So uh, there were so many parts of the day that were just absolutely heartbreaking to see. We, um, we stopped a few times and the driver was very protective over me. So as I said, there was me and two males that I was with. The two males could like walk around and take pictures of, or videos, of whatever they wanted. For me, when we were on the beach, that was okay. There was no one around. But when we had stopped on the side of the road, I had to be like within an arm's length of him. At one point he was at one end of the car and I went to the other end of the car to take a picture. And um, he was like, get back here now, don't go too far away. And so like I appreciated and I expected that it would be a little bit more difficult for me to travel as a woman um, compared to the, the men. So that was really nice. Uh, even when we went for lunch and we were in the kitchen, the boys were walking around taking videos and pictures and he made me stand next to him because downstairs is where all the men ate and the women and families ate upstairs. And so the, they're walking around and I was standing next to him and then I must have stepped into the doorway and he like immediately told me to move. Like, no, they can see you in the doorway. Don't stand there. Um, in saying that though, when we had finished lunch and we went back downstairs, the men were so great with me. They had their kids there and they wanted to take pictures of me with their children. So I was like sitting on this, um, <coughs> like concrete wall. And so there was just all these children that were like awkwardly standing near me and their parents were, were taking photos. So, um, yeah, that, that was really nice. The 
Portuguese man that we were with, he had a great idea. He um, took soccer jerseys that he'd bought off Amazon. He probably had 10 soccer jerseys and gave it to the kids. So if you are planning to do something like that, that the kids were absolutely wrapped with that. Uh, in hindsight, I wish that I had have done something similar for the girls because it seemed as though the boys always get gifts off um, tourists when they go uh, and the girls didn't, didn't have anything. However, our driver who, when we would stop places, there'd be like five kids would come to the door. And I thought that, I thought someone was trying to open the door to get in here. <laughs> anyway, back to what I was saying. Five kids would come to the, um, to the car door and he would have um, like a thousand dollar note which I'll find in my bag. Um, so he would have like a thousand dollars. He had a wad of cash um, on him. I don't know, is this, here we go. The Central Bank of Yemen. So this is a thousand dollars and it was, it's worth at this point, less than, a th uh, less than $1 US. So he had this wad of cash and he was like um, literally carrying it around. You can see from here where he's bent it. He gave us these and he would give one of these to each of the five kids. And I think that it was used as a form of like bribery to um, not annoy anyone in charge and so he can continue doing his business and coming back the same with bottles of water people would come up and they would say like I'm hungry or thirsty and he would just hand out bottles of water so again if you're planning to go um, maybe not so much taking food because he seemed to be all over that but the gifts like the kids really love that and there is so much poverty in the area um, then we left it was pretty straightforward leaving at the border to Oman. It did take a little bit of time as well to cross out of the border in um, into the country itself, not as long as on the way in. And then we just stopped and we did some scenic um, photos on the way back, which was um, glorious. It was a really good day. I'm glad that I went. I was very nervous, particularly being a Caucasian woman, what it would be like to go. Um, I... If you were to ask me if I recommend it, I guess it depends what type of traveler you are. Uh, it is dangerous. There were times where I felt like I was in an unsafe position. At one point we were driving through the main road and a car pulled up and we both stopped side by side. And the man in the car next to us, he was saying to our driver, like, who are you? Who are these people? What are you doing here? Um, and they did get over it and we drove off and he turned around and left. However, our driver didn't stop talking about it for an hour. So we were in turn a little bit worried about that, about what that could mean. We were still in Yemen. We didn't know if we were going to get out or not um, because of this guy. He said that he was really important and he was the leader of something. So probably that was a little bit worrying. Um, yeah, as a woman, at no point did I feel safe. I mean, dress appropriately. I had a small handbag on me. Uh, no one ever asked to look into my things. The driver did say that the men are very shy when it comes to women. And if they asked to check all three people's bags, they would not ask. They would ask for what my bag was and then they wouldn't touch it at all um, because they are shy around women. But I had a good day. If you do have any other questions uh, on visiting Yemen, uh, put them in the comments or send me a message on socials. My name is The Real Elle Woods, the same as this channel. Um, and then I'll, I'll post some content on Oman because today we are going out to see Salala. <laughs> Thank you.